Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is Master Sniper Helene Larkin, also known as Mad Larkin. A sniper so capable that recruitment officers looked the other way and let him in, and who has since trained every sniper in the Tanith first and only. In the video today, I'll be painting this model from the new 2021 Gaunt's Ghost set. And starting off, I separated some of the parts from the model to make him easier to paint, and put blue tack on all of the contact surfaces so I'll be sticking plastic to plastic and not paint to paint when it comes to reassemble. I also put my usual mix of super glue, sand and baking powder to create a varying texture on the base and gave all of the pieces a grey prime. As there are six models to talk about and I don't want to repeat myself and make six near identical videos, I'll concentrate on one feature or area for each model in each video. And in this video, I'll be discussing sub-assemblies and why I've been going on about it so much for this set. Larkin is probably the best example to talk about for this subject because he's the hardest to paint fully assembled. If I do a little time travel and show the model before it was primed, you can see that whilst it's possible to reach most of the model, much of the inside of it is hidden behind other parts, making it hard to reach. The usual argument against sub-assemblies is that if you can't reach it with a brush, you can't see it in the end model, but you can clearly see all of these parts that I'm pointing out and the difficulty it is to get there. However, after I separate these parts, I was able to reach everywhere that will ultimately be visible with much less difficulty. In fact, there's actually one part that's still not accessible behind his left shoulder, but that is an area that will not be visible when assembled, so I'll ignore it. And back to the present, or past still, because I recorded this a few days ago, you can see that I filled in a lot of the base coats of the area that's restricted. I have a few different styles when it comes to sub-assemblies, and which I use depends on how restrictive the model is to reach inside, how visible those parts are, and how much I care. That last one comes up a lot, and if you check my line infantry Tanith models, you'll see none of them are sub-assembled, and there's primer or even plastic visible on quite a few of them. But for these character models, I want to put in the extra effort to make it look a little nicer. But if you've seen the other models in the set, you may have noticed that I generally only base coat before fully assembling the models. And that's because the ratio of difficulty versus visibility isn't so big. For Larkin, however, as well as a few bits on McCall, I instead painted much further to the point where some parts are fully painted before the assembly was completed. Larkin's chest, the left side of the rifle, the pouches on his legs and so on are easily visible in the final model and not reachable with a brush for the highlights or texturing I wanted to achieve there. So the three methods are, one, don't, two, just the base coats for the restricted areas, and three, fully paint those sections. As I'm meaning to fully paint some of these areas, I'll highlight and shadow the uniform, as well as even painting in some of the camo pattern on the inside of the cloak, a step that I usually leave towards the end of the painting for my Tanith models. Many people have a certain part of a model that they save till the end, or once they reach that part, they consider the model done. For some, that last part is the face. For others, it's the base. For my ghost models, it kind of tends to be the cloak. As I mentioned, I'm painting out the left side of the rifle, but that sort of means I'll just paint the whole thing as it's a lot easier that way. My painting handle is, yes, I'm getting to it. I'll need some final testing before I release it. Specifically designed for complete models with some options for how the bases attach. But when painting a part without a base, like Larkin's body section previously, or the rifle part here, it's not really the easiest thing to use but I did give it a go. As a little callback to my old Larkin video, I have base coated the wrap around the rifle brown and I'll highlight it into white shortly. Last time I sort of got on with it without really making the decision and it worked out, so this time I'll just copy my homework and change it a little so no one notices. But to ensure that this part goes on and doesn't cause any other issues, I'm testing what parts I need to paint before I assemble it. 
And it turns out, everything. Even the wrap here comes just that little bit too close to Larkin's cheek for me to feel comfortable sticking a tiny brush in there. Once it's glued together, it'll be even harder to fix any mistakes that I make. So I paint the wrap as well before assembling. This is the only part of painting that I haven't mentioned in another video in the series already, but it's really not that interesting. Base in brown, mix some white into the brown and highlight in the same way as elsewhere. But that's a lot of separate parts painted up well enough that the model can now go together. And there is that horrid join. This would be easy to solve with Milliput if I could assemble the model fully before priming. In my case, I'm choosing to press these parts together with polystyrene cement, just enough that it should squeeze out of the gap, and then I can shave down the squeeze out for a smooth finish. Unfortunately, I missed a spot and I ended up with this gap at the top. So for the third time in this series, I'll resort to my super dangerous and risky solvent weld. Really thin stuff that flows like a wash and gets into details and melts them. And it didn't really do what I was after. I mean, sure, it filled the gap, but it also bobbled over the top of the shoulder. And this is my slurry mix, so this will leave a little blister of plastic once the solvent has evaporated. I came very close to making a big mistake here, trying to scrape it off while it's still soft. This would have been like scraping chewing gum off of another piece of chewing gum and expecting it to retain a smooth surface. So I restrained myself and waited for it to evaporate and the aggregate to harden. And thankfully I did, because once hardened, it just looked like a little fold in the fabric, and so I left it as it was. And all that remains is painting in the cloak around the back, just as I have before, dark green base coat, little blue mixed in for the shadows and a lighter green for the highlights. The camo pattern is all the paints from the palette spotted, dotted and stippled onto patches all over, creating a saturation of spots. And finally a brown wash on the bottom of the cloak, two layers with different edges to make at least somewhat of a gradient, and the model is complete. The old 2002 model is closer to true scale and hunched over, giving the impression of a small wiry man, a very fitting model. New Larkin is far more confident, resolute, but in being an oversized 35mm has a physique that the character doesn't have. However, the old model is hunched over, making it a somewhat boring model to look at when gaming, and the new one is far cooler in that situation. The old Larkin model will still remain in my army as a generic, unnamed sniper, as he is replaced by the new and improved version. Please check out my playlist of Gaunt's Ghost videos, I've been showing off many methods for making cloaks, as well as other modelling techniques, parts and supplies for making a Tanith army. And also all of the other YouTube-y things, there's a comment section below for asking questions, a description with links to my other stuff. But with all that said, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.